The flap that we're going to demonstrate for you now is the so-called gracilis flap. The gracilis is one of the strap muscles of your thigh, and it's a thigh adductor. In other words, it brings your leg closer into the midline. What we've diagrammed out for you is a skin paddle that's based on, once again, perforators that come up from the blood supply of the gracilis. We are going to isolate the gracilis from the other strap muscles on the thigh by seeing where it inserts on the um, proximal tibia. And then we'll separate it from the semimembranosus and semitendinosus muscles of the distal thigh here, and then follow it back, and then take it most of the way up to the symphysis pubis. The critical thing about a gracilis flap is its blood supply, which supplies the skin. The blood supply comes into the muscle at a distance approximately six to nine centimeters distal to the symphysis pubis. So it will come in around here. What this allows us to do is to use this skin and muscle to cover defects of the backside. For example, if this patient had a pressure sore on the ischium from sitting in a wheelchair for too long, this is a nice flap to bring up to pad and to provide coverage. If the patient had a perirectal wound from a cancer or from radiation, this is a great flap to help provide muscle and actually even sphincter to provide for control of bowel function. It can be used for the perineum. So in a female patient or somebody who is transgendered and wants a female anatomy, this can be used to structure a neo-vagina. It can be basically the walls, one from the left side and one from the right side. So without further ado, Dr. Kwan is going to dissect this flap out based on isolating its tendon distally and then going proximally and showing you the, the relative anatomy. So to recapitulate, this is the skin paddle that's associated with the underlying gracilis muscle. The gracilis goes from the symphysis pubis down to the medial portion of the um, distal femur and the tibia. It actually crosses the knee. Um, this is the dissection of that. You see how this becomes muscle and then tendon only for its distal portion. We take advantage of the fact that this is one of the strap muscles, which means it's thin and it's long. And so that mode of action to have a long, thin, fairly flat muscle is very useful in many parts of the body. So for example, if you have a patient that has a hemifacial palsy, in other words, their smile is drooping on one side of their face and they can't pull it up, you can actually transfer this muscle as a functional neurotized muscle graft um, to the face. You have to hook up the blood supply as well, but then you have a way of animating the corner of the face again. If you, for example, have a bad injury on your hand where you don't have the ability to flex or extend your digits, you can use this muscle in place of either the flexors or the extensors as a neurotized functional muscle transfer. We're now going to show you the blood supply to this flap because it's, um, it's of concern. It's a branch off of the profunda femoris artery that goes to the medial descending femoral circumflex um, vessel. This is where it comes through the vastus medialis, and then this is actually the neurovascular pedicle to this flap. Again, this is the gracilis. 
it goes through the muscle here and it, it supplies this skin. So this is the blood supply. Notice that it comes in not at the very proximal end of the flap. Remember when we were in the leg, we showed you the gastrocnemius muscle that had the blood supply coming directly down the turnpike. This one comes in from the medial aspect of the muscle, and it's about a third of the way down from the length of the muscle, which means that you have to take it, um, in that into effect when you are using this flap someplace in the perineum or the groin. So you see, though, how this is a nice, pliable piece of skin. It has muscle here that you can tunnel it up into the vagina or around the rectum. It has a good reach, taking into account this neurovascular pedicle. Again, you can leave it attached where it is, which somewhat limits its reach, or you can detach it and hook up a blood supply someplace else in the body, in the face or in the hand or in um, other parts where you need a functional neuromuscular transfer. So this is now, once the tendon portion of that has actually been cut, and you see all the way down to the end of it, it still has muscle. That's not always the case. It could somewhat be tendinous here, in which case that's where you would determine where you end it. But that's a very nice long length of muscle. So here you can rotate it around, and you can put it up into the perineum. You can put it up to line the vagina if you need to um, uh, do it that way. So that's the arc of rotation here. You have to be careful that it is not, um, that it is not pulling too much on the vascular leash. But in uh, a person who was alive, that would be a little bit more supple. Um, but you see how its arc of rotation allows you basically to go up to if you had a pressure sore up here or if you had a problem with the rectum, you can go here. Or if you wanted to make a new vagina, you could do that there. So that is the gracilis muscle with a skin paddle.